I'm Paula Nutting, your musculoskeletal specialist. Today I thought we would address some issues with the neck and shoulders and I've got Lulu who's giving me a hand today and we're going to address particularly what we can do with the neck and the shoulders and arm range. So going through a little bit of um, background anatomy, if we're looking at uh, Bruce here and look at his range of motion with his neck, we can actually treat neck pathologies by working through the pec fibers and drawing through with techniques called um, myofascial release techniques or active range movements or glide techniques that will open up through the shoulder, address clavicular tightness, which then addresses the scapula. And we find that by opening up that whole shoulder complex, we can improve the quality of neck range. So what we're going to do is first we're going to have a look at Lulu and see what her neck range feels like. And I'm going to go to the behind so I can actually palpate on her upper trapezius. So standing behind your patient, and I find this is a really good technique to do with people sitting down versus having them lie on the table. The reason behind that is, is that you can reassess the neck range without having to get them up and down and up and down. So it makes the smoothness in your clinical practice. So fingers are going to rest on the anterior fibers of upper trap. And Lulu, can you turn your head to the right for me? So I'm feeling underneath my fingers for any tension. And there is a little bit in there, isn't there? Yeah. And then turning to your left for me. And you can see that she's probably got greater range coming this way than the other way. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with her movement patterns of the right rotation while we address um, some restrictions through the pec major and a little bit pec minor, but mostly pectoralis major. The technique, when you're working in the clinic with them, you're going to get them to hold their hand up there and you're going to direct their head as she, ex well, not externally rotates, but as she moves her hand from forward flexion. That's great. So I'm going to palpate the clavicle, be just below it. Lulu, can you turn your head again for me? And I'm gliding or sliding my fingers along. And then back. I'm going to take two fingers down, so now more on sternalis and the sternal pec fibers, and drawing all the way along till I get to the tendon attachments and the anterior area of the bicep and deltoid. One more time for us. That's great. Okay. Now normally you could just do two or three or four to get a general idea of the movement and the quality. I like to stick with about three and then do a reassessment. So fingers on the um, upper fibers and turn your head to the right again for me, Lou. Yeah, how's that feel? That's so much better. Yeah, and the range looks better too. So that kind of work you can do in your clinic. We can do it with clothing off, obviously with a towel draped over and using a very light Maya lube. But when they're at home, all you're gonna do is get them to actually use one hand fingers right at the chest and they're going to do the glide themselves so i'm going to explain to lulu you put your fingers of your right hand here your left hand comes out and as you turn your head to the right you're going to draw those fingers along and try again and drawing along really twist they can do this after they've had a shower when the skin's nice and warm they could do it when they're feeling restriction and tightness first thing in the morning. There's oodles of times, even if they're sitting down doing a lot of desk work and finding that the neck is tight, don't spend loads of time up here because we can make big changes down here. I'm Paula Nutting, your musculoskeletal specialist.